In science, typically what we do is we focus on uh, the negative effects associated with drugs, in part because our sort of funding um, uh, mission, uh, the mission of our major funder is to focus primarily on the bad things that happens following drug use. And as a good scientist, you kind of just follow that mission. Um, and that's okay, there's nothing wrong with focusing on the bad things that happen with drugs. Um, it's actually needed. But the problem is, is that people think that, that those are the only effects that happen with drugs. Not only are there, not only, not only are they, uh, there are other effects associated with drugs, but there are more of those other effects. And so these negative effects are actually lower. Um, or there are a smaller number of negative effects as opposed to these other effects. So you don't have a comprehensive understanding of drug effects if you only focus on the negative effects. And that's a problem. When people go to make public policy, they only focus on these negative effects, when in fact there are more other effects uh, than those negative effects. And so that's an inappropriate sort of interpretation of some of the data. I did a paper on methamphetamine uh, about a year ago, um, um, uh, methamphetamine and cognition and brain imaging. Um, people have interpreted any brain differences in methamphetamine users, for example, as being pathology, as being some awful effect, when in fact difference is not pathology or impairment. Difference is just that, difference. It doesn't necessarily mean that it leads one to behave in pathological ways, but that's how it's been interpreted in the field. And that's a problem. So we have to make sure that we focus on the important outcome, behavior. That's the important outcome. We want to know how people are actually behaving. Are they performing within a normal range for cognitive functioning? Are they uh, paying taxes? Are they doing these kinds of things that we think uh, responsible people in our society are supposed to do? Far more important. So if we keep the focus on those sorts of things and use neuroscience to help us explain or understand the mechanism underlying those things, okay, that's, that's fine. Neuroscience has a role to play. Uh, but we have to be careful not to overinterpret what differences mean. Uh, differences do, do not equate to damage. We act as if the drugs are special, uh, like there's something particularly addicting about heroin, particularly addicting about cocaine, particularly addicting about methamphetamine. The drugs aren't special. When you realize that most of the people who use all of those drugs are not addicted and they don't have a problem, it lets you, it provides some clue to you that these drugs aren't special. Uh, if these drugs are not special and most of the people who use them are not addicted, it tells you also that it might be something about the people who are addicted that might be more, uh, might provide a better explanation. And so people are addicted for a variety of reasons. Uh, some have uh, fewer alternative, uh, attractive alternative options, some people. Other people have co-occurring psychiatric disorders that lead to their drug abuse. Uh, but there are a wide range of reasons why people are addicted to drugs. Um, and many of these reasons have little to do with the drug themselves. We as a society would do well by trying to understand why each individual is addicted to any drug as opposed to going after the drug itself. That's ridiculous. It's like saying, well, somebody is having pro a problem with their automobiles. They crash, they drive recklessly. Let's ban cars. That'll work. That's about how stupid we have behaved with drugs. It's not the drug. It's these other things that, that we need to figure out.